Through dangers untold and lockdowns unnumbered, I have fought my way here to the castle beyond 2020 to take back the year that you have stolen. For my will is as strong as yours and my kingdom is as great. Damn it, I can never remember that line. You have no power over me. You have no power over me. You have no power over me. Hi guys and welcome to Faywood 2021 edition. If you're here, then that means you survived 2020. Good job. <laughs> Give yourselves a pat on the back. What a year, uh, far out. Hoping for a much better 2021, but uh, as a lot of people have said, let's have no expectations because who knows, we don't know at this point. But you know what? One thing that will cheer us all up, I think, is doing a giveaway. So I've been meaning to do a giveaway for some time and I thought it would be a perfect first video back for 2021. I was originally going to do a giveaway when I hit the 2000 subscriber mark, but so many things were happening in the world. We were, you know, in lockdown, I believe, at around that time. It just wasn't a great time. So I figure now seems like a reasonable time to do a giveaway. I am going to make it international. Uh, I will say though that postage is still really slow all over the world so uh, keep that in mind. <laughs> I can't do anything about the post but I'll try and make it a trackable type of situation so that whoever wins will at least know where in the wide world their parcel is um, even if it does take a million years. <laughs> so with that being said, I'm going to have a similar situation that I've had with previous giveaways, if you've been here with me for any of those, where I have a random generator pick the winner and then, you know, contact them and organise to get your details and that sort of thing um, to send you the prize. I'll put all the details down in the description box um, about it so that you can have a read. You do, do need to be a subscriber uh, and you do need to comment something uh, just letting me know that you want to enter. So put whatever you like for this one, um, but just mention in the comment that you'd like to enter and that way I can make sure that I'm selecting someone who's interested in it. So I've actually held on to this for some time and what I'm giving away is the Labyrinth book. This is just a plain sketchbook or diary or whatever you want to use it for and it looks just like the labyrinth book uh, that Sarah uses in the movie so I thought that was really cool. Uh, if anyone is interested in this and doesn't win or wants to buy it from themselves I'll put a link to where I got it. It was from Redbubble so um, I thought it was just such a cute little idea. I do believe there are now some uh, of these books on Amazon that seem to be, because th I don't, this wasn't licensed, I don't believe. Um, I don't think anything from um, Redbubble is licensed, if I'm correct. I'm not sure. Um, I think it's independent artists. Does anyone know? Uh, there's some great stuff on Redbubble anyway, um, but I did see one that had, you know, Jim Henson across it So it looks like it was a licensed version. I'll try and link that one as well so that you can get uh, either one of those This one is from Redbubble though And then to go along with that so it's a total labyrinth theme. So hopefully a labyrinth fan wins this I have a little set of the goblins that go with the labyrinth board game now I don't have the board game to give away with this, um, but I thought it would just be fun to give away the goblins because you don't need to play the game, I don't think, to have to enjoy the little minis. So, and I have my own set as well. <laughs> uh, so we can be twinsies. <laughs> um, anyway, I thought today what we would do in the video is we'll paint a set of these and that'll give whoever wins this some inspiration to paint them themselves um, or other people watching who um, if you're not lucky enough to win the giveaway you might decide to get a set yourself and paint them I think there's some other sets as well there's um, there's a deluxe set although that one's gold I don't know if you'd want to paint that and then I did see a fiery set so that looked pretty cool as well um, so yeah we're gonna paint these 
<laughs> we have a fizzy. <laughs> Hello, fizzy. We have a fizz gig. <laughs> Hello, are you coming to help? Are you going to help me paint? You want to paint some goblins? Are you a little fuzzy goblin? Well, these little uh, cards go with each of the pieces and that's going to help me a little bit to remember the colours of the goblins, although I might need to look up some pictures still just to get some inspiration. I'm not going to be too much of a stickler on trying to make it like the movie because I just want to have fun with this. Now, I am going to try to undercoat these with my airbrush, which is actually just sitting over here. Um, <laughs> now, I am very new with the airbrush, so hopefully this goes okay. Uh, but we shall see. <laughs> I think we're gonna make it. Oh, piece of cake. <laughs> Can we just appreciate the chrome finish of this? I am loving this stuff. It's this liquid chrome, uh, Molotow liquid chrome stuff. You can use it in your airbrush and everything as well. It's not cheap, but it's really cool. To get a bit of a rusty look, I used a bit of a wash of this brown and then washes of other colors as well. The wash of black acrylic on top of the silver seeps into all those little nooks and crannies and really starts making it look like metal. So the way I approached these was to really block out the colour to start with and then work out what uh, details I wanted to accentuate and work out what colours I wanted to use and then start putting in more detail. I actually used the same acrylic paints that I bought for my airbrush for this and they were quite good. They were nice and matte actually, more than my student acrylic paints were. Um, I'm still kicking myself a little bit with the gloss that I put on the end because I feel like it was a bit too glossy, but these were very nice paints. Now red can take a bit to build up so I did actually do quite a number of coats that I didn't show you guys on here because no one needs to see me paint five layers of red. And I slowly started to put in some of the deeper colours with this um, little critter that the goblin's riding. Just really building up those shadows slowly, slowly. It definitely pays to have a really, really fine brush for this. I mostly used the same brush uh, for the whole thing because all of it's very small and detailed.
What I found as well is it really also pays to accentuate contrast. Uh, I think given the size of these, when I was painting a few bits and it wasn't too contrasted, it was difficult to see all of the detail of the um, minis. So then I started to really pump up that uh, contrast and make it show up a lot more. And then I was starting to really like the way it looked. I decided to go for green for the base. I just felt like it contrasted better with all the other colours. Uh, like it made the other colours pop. Now this one was quite detailed at certain parts. Um, the little critter that's on the end of the pole is tiny, so it's really hard to um, get the detail of that. And with all of these, some of the bits and pieces, I had to really pay attention to what um, what it was. You know, was it armor? Was it a shirt? Sometimes that was part of um, working out what to do was working out what the details were. So with highlights, I always just try and think about where would the light hit and you know um, really pumping up the bits that sort of protrude so with the face you know the cheekbones protrude um, maybe on top of the um, eyebrows the forehead the bridge of the nose things like that um, or maybe the uh, shoulders elbows and things depending on how the thing is situated So try and think about that, I guess, when you're working out where to put highlights. Fire! Ooh! Hey! I just fired you! I did the armor a little bit different on this guy. It was really hard for me to not use the chrome because I love that chrome stuff so much. So I was like, no, Lauren, you can step away from the chrome and do a different colored armor. So I did this guy in a kind of green iron looking armor instead. And realistically, none of the goblins have shiny chromey armor. It was just really me wanting to use chrome paint. <laughs> I did sneak a little bit of chrome there though for his pickaxe. <laughs> So I've used a, a range of different techniques. Um, sometimes I was using a little bit of dry brushing and for that I just had this really old um, paintbrush that was a bit rough and those are perfect. Hold on to those for a little bit of small dry brushing. And other parts, especially over the chrome, I liked using a bit of a wash. And then if, if you do it carefully, it seeps into the crevices. And then you might even want to pat it off a little bit. 
And then sometimes you just have to do detailed line work. The beauty of acrylic is you can always paint over it, so if you make a mistake, it doesn't really matter, you can fix it up. Except if you use the wrong gloss, that is. <laughs> uh, that varnish, it was just too glossy. Now the faces were so small, this was really challenging, especially um, getting into like little details and you know doing like eyes and stuff like that. That was, take your time, um, a wash might be a way to go for that too because it might soak into the uh, wrinkles and crevices that you want it to soak into. So this was the smallest of the minis and it was difficult to get into the little bits and pieces of his um, outfit and face and things and there wasn't a lot to him either so I was really trying to accentuate certain bits because there wasn't much uh, to focus on. So I did a lot of shading with his shirt and then tried to put some detail into his face as well. And then for the base, I didn't want it just a flat green, so I decided to dry brush a little bit of my uh, rubbing bronze and then a little bit of gold leaf on top as well. Uh, and the gloss. So, really do regret this. And also, the gloss didn't work with the Molotow. <laughs> it moved it around everywhere. Well, I'm pretty pleased with how these came out, but my god, these little buggers are tiny and hard to paint. <laughs> This has taken me days and, you know, as always, I always think I can get things done much faster than it actually takes. And I was like, yeah, day, that'll be fine. I'll get that done. No worries. Nope. <laughs> I've done a clear coat of varnish on them. It's still a little tacky, so I'm going to be leaving it overnight. But I did have a little bit of an issue, especially with this little guy. Um, so the varnish that I used actually reactivated the Molotow uh, paint and I didn't realize it would do that. I should have realized, like I know I've had that issue before when I've used the um, alcohol inks and I didn't even think about it for this. And so yeah, I was painting this one, which was the first one I started painting that had some serious silver on it. And then I noticed I was giving the whole thing a bit of a coating of uh, metallic silver. And so I was like, oh, shit. So uh, the level of like detail and contrast in this guy uh, was definitely compromised. Uh, I did try and go back in and fix up some of the details. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to call it at that. I think I've fixed it up okay. Um, at least good enough for myself. I'm sure 
others who paint minis on the regular could do a much better job than I have, but I don't know, for someone who doesn't really do this, I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> I'm not sure on my choice of like using the gloss. I have a feeling like having something a little bit more matte on there might have been good, but I don't know. There's something about, you know, beautifully glossy pieces that kind of appealed to me. So, and I forgot that I had matte varnish until I did it. So <laughs> there's that. Um, this one, I didn't have an issue with the silver moving somehow. I just... I kind of dabbed on the varnish and got away with it, luckily. It didn't really move around too much. And then if I saw any silver on the brush, I just wiped the brush clean. It, look, it's not going to be the best varnish to use if I'm using this silver. But I got away with it, sort of. Sort of. He's not too bad, is he? <laughs> And then this little guy, this one was hard to capture the details of because he's just so tiny. So I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing these come to life. And I hope you're keen to enter the competition. I really can't wait to see whoever wins what they do with the pieces. So I hope whoever does win does give it a try themselves and shows me, you know, how you go with it. I'd love to see what kind of colour schemes you come up with. It'd be really cool. Um, look, it's it's fun to do, so uh, definitely recommend giving it a try. If you've never painted little minis like this before, it's super, super fun. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Make sure you do look at the rules um, if you'd like to enter the competition. I'll have the closing date, the entry rules, and all of that listed down below. Uh, hope you all enter. Hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you all next time in Feywood. Bye, guys. have no power over me.